Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Draw and Living Waters. Hope everybody is doing well this evening. Welcome to Visual Disturbance. I'm your host, Brian Reese, and welcome to FOJC Underground Church. Also be streaming on here at the same program. Welcome, everybody, in the chat. Welcome, everybody, to the program. And uh, this episode, folks, is the We Are Legion Breaking Chains of Bondage, Draw and Living Waters, Episode 7. And I'm really excited about this program, folks, because Mark 5 is one of my one of my favorite uh, chapters of Mark. And um, to do this with me tonight, and like we always have Brother Adam Arbara on, welcome, Adam, to the program, my friend. Hello, shalom, shalom, and hello, everybody. And thanks for thanks for inviting me back on. <laughs> glad glad to be here. Yeah, it's always a blessing, and it's super cool. we got a lot going on. This is our first Draw and Live Waters, Brother Adam, of 2024. Can you believe it? First Draw and Live Waters. Here we are, fresh out of the gate in January, and this is going to be a good one. Can you believe it? It's 2024. Can you believe it, Adam? No. <laughs> Things happen like, way too fast. It's, 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 it's crazy. It feels like time's just slipping through, slipping through my fingers. <laughs> Um, somebody always told me back in the day that it was to do when you get older, but I don't believe yeah. that. I don't believe that, my friend. I think time is, even for younger people, it seems like it's speeding up substantially. That's just my opinion. So folks, we're going to be breaking through the chains of bondage. We're going to be talking about Mark 5, and it's really, it's just a really good uh, chapter to get into tonight. So Brother Adam, what do you have to draw for us tonight? What do you, what did we draw in here tonight? Well, we're going to be drawing um, the man that uh, had the chains on him, the man that uh, couldn't be shackled by chains. He was, something got in him and um, he broke through fetters and um, whatever was in him knew who Jesus was. And Jesus, uh, well, he came to set the captives free. So we're going to get into something along those lines. Absolutely. The first verse of Mark 5. And they came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadareans. And when he was come out of the ship, he immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. What do you think about that, Adam? That, this sounds like a pretty scary dude. Yeah, this guy sounds like he was. Um, well, I mean, it's basically saying he's uh, he's possessed by these uh, these spirits that are like giving him like super human strength, basically. And it's so interesting thinking about uh, like superhero kind of stuff, and they get like this superhuman strength, and like it makes me think of the Hulk too, you know, um, getting all like. <laughs> angry and busting through stuff and things like that. But um, it's awesome because we see the truth in the Bible about it and how Jesus uh, deals with this. Yeah. Like you said, Hulk smash. Yeah. Hulk smash. And um, it's interesting how they put that in the Hollywood narratives. And that seems like it's been going on since before I was even born. Even mm -hmm. in the 80s, there's all kinds of superhero programs and way back in the day, Superman and everything. So where does that original thought and idea come from? But then, mm -hmm. like like we're talking about tonight, there's been even movies talked about and then they, pre they present them out here for public consumption. And they're literally even blatantly called Legion. What do you think yeah. about that? And they have angels and demons and different, it's subliminal messaging, folks. Yeah. What do you think, Adam? It's it's crazy yeah. stuff. And there's it actually. Let me see if I have it here real quick. Um, oh darn, I don't have it. But there's a. Uh, I was shocked to see, um, you know, being a person that paints and draws and stuff. Um, I don't just do it on the computer. I do it on you know, on paper, and on canvas and stuff too. And it's so crazy because there's actually a company. Um, that's it's called legion paper 
And if you look at it, um, it says uh, Legion, and then at the bottom it says We Are Paper. If you could believe that, and it, I was shocked that I was thinking, "Are you kidding me?" Even in even in something as simple as paper, you know, you can't even you can't even look for paper without um, seeing, uh, well, I guess, the fallen state and people. Um, for some reason or another, lifting that up, you know, lifting that kind of stuff up versus um, actually the one who who healed this man and cast Legion out. I think it's pretty crazy. But yeah, I mean, it's like everywhere uh, looking around at, at, at our world. I got one for you, Adam, just listening to your story. Where did the paper come from? The Legion company you're referring to, where did the paper come from and how do they manufacture it? If it's if it's real or if it's actually from a real tree, where do the trees come from? Wonder what forest it came out of. There you go. That's where your legion and demonic, you know, there could be all kinds of you know rabbit holes we can go down. But that's just something to think about. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think actually some of their paper is uh, synthetic, artificial paper mm-hmm. too. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just just seeing that, uh, throwing that out there too. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. But isn't that crazy? That is crazy, Adam. That is very crazy. Uh, the next uh, next verse is Mark 4 through 7. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken into pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains, And in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus far off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Those verses, folks, are just very interesting. What do you think, Mm -hmm. Adam? Yeah, I always found it fascinating that like these these demonic entities knew immediately who Jesus was and they feared him because um that is the power that he has over over everything, right? He he controls it all. And like it says on here, um there will come a time when these entities will be cast into uh the pit and tormented forever. And um, they they all bow to the name of Jesus. They all know who He is and um, and fear Him. And that's the that's the great um, gift that He offers to to us is that ability to repent and come to Him, and to be able to have a relationship with Him that we can know Him and know know the Father as well, and be covered in the blood to to not have to fear these things, not have to fear these entities or anything like this. And knowing that we can call upon Jesus to break these things free. Absolutely. hundred percent. Um, I see where you have the, what inspired you to, to make the tombs around the cave on this drawing uh, here. Can you elaborate to that? It's very interesting. Just, just basically there, um, uh, Mark five, yeah, uh, I was I was doing some or sorry, Mark five, verse five, I should say, uh, where it says, "And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones." And um, I was just doing some research, looking at some tombs that are there in in Israel, mm-hmm. and uh, there's some that are like above ground, and they're kind of like how I had portrayed, where they're like up above ground, big old slabs of stone cut, and then there's some that are actually in the like in a cave almost, or like dug out and bore out of of the side of a wall or like a side of a, a rock face. So I kind of included mm. both there that imagining this guy like, you know, and, and he's, I mean, he's not there. He's not in his right mind. He's not even in control of his own body at this point. These mm. entities have like completely taken over. Um, and uh, just the thought and this this weird attraction with uh with death honestly that these entities are still driving him to and like tormenting this poor this poor man his body by cutting it and all this stuff 
Um, so yeah, just doing research um, and reference gathering of uh, existing places that are that are out there. Um, I thought it was fitting to to include some of those tombs there. Oh, well, this is an interesting note. Um, it goes right along with this. Here in Kentucky, I have noticed, well, I have researched too, there's rock shelters, rock caves, all that good stuff that have substantial evidence, blood sacrifices, and, you know, cannibalism, all the above. Let's just go mm-hmm. there. And it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. It's just a little compelling there to think about, especially this Mark 5 um, account here in the biblical scriptures here. So, yeah. A little, <laughs> little crazy. A little crazy world that we live in. A lot of things have happened. A lot of strange things throughout our history. But yeah, the next verse, next verses, folks. It's Mark chapter 5, 8 through 11. For he said unto them, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he bestowed him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh until the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. That, when you think about that and you look at that and evaluate it, uh, the Legion and, you know, I know David Caracos talked about this too in many broadcasts he's done, but if you look at that, it can mean a thousand you know, it can mean up to a thousand. Could you imagine uh, Adam having being so tormented that you have, you know, a bunch of people or well, not people, but demons riding along as passengers on your daily walk, you know, and tormenting yeah. you so much that you want to, you know, go out in a, into a cave system and wander off into oblivion, you know, yeah. just, you know, could you imagine that? Yeah, um, I, I can imagine that um, just getting in like, my early walk, I guess, when I was first kind of coming out of out of the world and really um, trying to get right with the Father, trying to get um, all the junk out, um, I had weird stuff happen, thoughts entering into my mind, weird things going on that uh, was definitely, um, it, it seemed like, some kind of it, it was definitely spiritual warfare and definitely kind of um sorts of supernatural just stuff that you wouldn't a normal mind would not think of these things you know what i mean and um the enemy does not play fair either and the only way to fight it is is with the word of god because we know that that confusion is not of the father like he's not given us a, a spirit of fear he's not confusion doesn't come from him either so when i was noticing a lot of these things happening and a lot of it was bringing massive confusion to to my walk and everything um then learning more about it it's like this is this is all symptoms and signs of uh some kind of demonic oppression some kind of demonic involvement um and it's not that necessarily like in this particular case yeah it was like an extreme case because i'm reading here um we got what is this um Smith's, uh, let me see one second. Uh, Smith's dictionary, uh, Smith's Bible dictionary is defining a legion as the chief subdivision of the Roman army containing about 6,000 infantry. It's like you're saying a thousand. This is, this one is saying 6,000 and there's all kinds of different things and influences that can, that can invade our, our mind. Um, and, uh, again, that, that was all, on me because I was walking a disobedient life, you know, before uh, really repenting and, and learning what what sin really is and, and coming out of that. I've been there, done that too, Adam. Some things that I regret. And we yes. pray, we just pray that, you know, the Father has mercy on us and mm-hmm. thank God for grace, right? So, Amen. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, and uh, that also makes me think of, um, um, where is it, Luke. Um, oh, darn, where did it go? It's in uh, Luke 4, 
I'll start in uh, 17. Um, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isa Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and all the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fasted on him. And they began to say, or, and he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And that is like, so I can't even imagine what that must've been like for people sitting there and hearing him saying these words. And he's literally saying them that he is he is the one to fulfill this, that this, you know, ancient, this, this prophecy that Isaiah had written about. And he's there. He's saying, yeah, this is me. <laughs> By the way, right here. This, yeah. And this is just further proof of that, that his his power over um, to set the captives free. Because it's interesting, because even though this man, the the legion had busted him out of like physical chains, right? He was not bound by these physical chains, yet he was still in bondage spiritually by these entities. And the only one who could set him free is Jesus Christ. And he came, he did that for this man. He had mercy on him and did that. And that's the, the again, like you're saying, thank God for, for his grace, because he extends that to everybody if if they will turn to him with a, with a, a full heart to, to follow after him. Amen, Adam. You know, it's interesting. Have you noticed uh, there is a s spiritual suppression here lately, right? Mm. There's a lot of weird stuff going on, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, you can go down the street and find a lot of dark things, you know. It's it's guard your heart time, you know. There's a lot of stuff that can manipulate the mind and de uh, deter the walk pretty quick, you know, in this, in this realm. It's pretty bizarre. But, yeah, I just wanted to put my two cents in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, folks, the, uh, let's see, let's continue on the next verses here. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that, Adam. Okay. All right. The next verses here is uh, Mark 5, 12 through 15. And all the devils besought him, saying, Sending, send us into the swan, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swan. And the herd ran uh, violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swan fled and towed it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And that, or excuse me, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion setting and clothed and in the right mind, they were afraid. That's pretty, that's pretty powerful words there, Adam. You know, what they, a sight that, yeah. Well, this is where, this is where people don't, you know, especially in today's world, you know, even when I was younger, I was never taught about demons right mm -hmm. and they don't understand where demons come from so we have literally demonic legion here that's taking over this gentleman and they know who the son of god is like you referenced earlier they know and they're scared and they're wondering mm -hmm. if it's their time right they're wondering if it's their time and and they know who's walking up on the stage here right where the the mark 5 account with this gentleman that's in torment they know who's getting ready to pull the hammer they know it's getting ready to go down, right? So, you know, we could go down a big, uh, big rabbit hole with this. You know, I always thought it was interesting. You know, even if it was the worst of the worst person that ever walked the earth that was up there that day, let's just say, I don't want to say anybody specific, but if it was the worst human being that ever walked the earth that was up on that hill, and uh, I still to this day would say that Jesus would throw those legion into the swan mm -hmm. and you know because human you know we're in the image of god you know the human side po side of it so you know i'm just saying i think it's interesting that he's 
that he put all the thousands of legion into the swine. And then they, here's where I'm at with this. I don't know what your take is, but I think when they went into the pigs, they couldn't, the pigs got so scared because they didn't, there was so much knowledge, so much evil, right? And their bodies couldn't handle it, you know, on top of that. And they couldn't retain it. It's because these legion and stuff want a human body because they used to be, Mm -hmm. you know, when you talk about the book of Enoch and, you look at the uh, narrative here with the giants and with the giants from the earth and they have embodied their embodied spirits. So they, mm-hmm. they roam the earth for eternity. It's kind of interesting. That's where demons come from. So it's interesting. They, they, they want to reside back into a fleshly body with, you know, extremities, you know, like yeah. a human, right. Or a giant. Hello. And, um, it's interesting. The pigs, you could, could you imagine they just started screaming? Could you imagine yeah. they just started going off out of control? And I know, I know mm-hmm. Jesus knew that. Mm-hmm. And he gave them what they did. He gave them what they wanted, you know, mm-hmm. and they, what, what's your, what's your take on that, Adam? I mean, yeah, you're making me think about it even more, really. Um, I find it interesting that they, uh, where does it say here? Um, that then the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea and they were choked in the sea. So it's like, it was like a very short lived, um, my goodness, I never really thought about this, but it was like a short lived experience. Right. Um, and we know in, in, in Revel, I believe it's in revelation where it talks about, uh, the serpent knowing that, or the devil knowing that his time is short. Right. And I never put this together. I don't know if there's a, a real tie there, but it's interesting that they wanted to go into the pigs. So she's like, all right, there you go. Go into the pigs. So they went into the pigs, but then they still ended up drowning in the in the sea you know Mm -hmm. it was like they had such a short window of getting um i guess even what they asked for right and then seeing them go down into the sea into the you know into the deep maybe you know because who knows what happened to them at that point you know um so i don't know there's there's my two cents back at you (laughs) going going that way yeah, but, um, man, I never thought about that really until right now. Yeah, it's um something to really ponder on. It's mm-hmm. compelling. It's just a thought, you know. But I mean, yeah, it, just a thought. It lines up. I mean, it it goes along with the Book of Enoch and the demonic, you know, as far as the embodied spirits that once, you know, was in the Nephilim, the giants. You know, we're talking about the Gilberim, the mighty men of old, the Genesis six verse four narrative. And it's just interesting. People don't pick that up. They don't understand it. They just, you know, just they just dust it off and act like and just throw it in the rug and act like it doesn't exist but that's just a thought i just thought you know like i said a minute ago i think i think even if they even if it was a fleet of men that was the most wicked men army that was on that on that hilltop still jesus would have slung them into the swan every mm-hmm. time every time because if you think about it he because all he's seen how it was tormenting the you know the the poor gentleman and mark you know he's tormenting all this bondage and then I keep thinking about this, the image of God. We are, you know, in the image of God. And I would, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's a, he cares about us. He mm-hmm. loves us, you know, so I don't think there's no way he would ever do that. Sling him back. You know, he would have never, he would always slung him into the swan. That's just my yeah. two cents. But yeah, again, he came to set the captives free, not to just exchange for one. <laughs> right now, yeah, exactly. Maybe go to a different person. Yeah, no, he didn't, exactly. He didn't come to do that. Exactly. Uh, the last, the last two verses, uh, Mark five, six, 16 through 17. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swan. And they begin to pray him to depart out of their coast. And I know we just talked about it a little bit, but, uh, that's the, what do you think about those last two verses? I mean, we pretty much covered it, but go ahead. And if you've got anything to add to that. Well, it kind of um, makes me think of, uh, I'm just going to go real quick and read some of these verses in John uh, 3.16 to uh, to 20. Let's say, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 
And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And it, that last verse there, because their deeds were evil, and the men loved darkness rather than light. I mean, that's like it makes me think of that. It's because I always found it so strange. How could they see this miracle that Jesus has healed this man who they saw him now? They knew he was like, this, this guy is crazy, you know, and like a fearful guy hanging on the tombs, cutting himself and everything. But now Jesus comes in and heals him, delivers him. Mm. And yet these people are like, mm, no, 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 I don't really like that. You, you just, can you please leave? Like, just leave, get out of here. It always kind of, I don't know, it, it, it makes me think of that for some reason, you know, like uh, men loving darkness rather than light. Like, why would, why wouldn't you do like glorify God for for that that Jesus has, has healed this man and, and look for more healing and forgiveness you know absolutely Adam 100 percent and I think this like you're saying I think this uh, mark 5 account here in the biblical scriptures I think it holds to today in 2024 I still think that it holds dear all the scripture does but when we look at it there our society and how de- at a deprived state it is and all the spiritual applications I think we are in that Ephesians six verse twelve, you know, time. You know, we're taught we're dealing with demonically charged principalities, mm-hmm. just like the gentleman in Mark five, just like him. Because there's all kinds of you see videos, you see people that are um, demonstrating super strength. Have you noticed that? I, I, heck, yes, I've seen yeah, that. I've seen yeah. this. I've seen this on my, I've seen this in my milk days, my milkman days is my occu- old occupation. Mm-hmm. I have seen some pretty bizarro stuff uh, where people are on stuff, you know, certain things I won't say on here, but they're on things that are uh, making them out of their mind and they become super, superhuman, super strong, you know, 110 pound lady, able to um, throw police officers that can bench press, you know, 400 pounds mm-hmm. just with like literally with ease. Right. So it reminds me of that. It reminds me of the Mark five account for this, uh, this drawing live waters program. Um, Adam, the drawing is finished. What, what do you, th- what overall the drawing, it is amazing piece of art, by the way. And I'm going to put it up on the screen here, if you don't mind. Do you want me to put it on the screen here for everybody to see? The complete, oh, yeah, that'd, the that'd completion, cool. the completion. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but yeah, uh, let's see here. There we are. Then we can comment on it and elaborate to what, uh, you know, you see the folks. I'm, uh, I know Adam's got a lot to say about this, but you see the, the gentleman in chains. And I like how you... Um, put the evil spirits coming out of his back out of the back you know the back of his you know he's coming out of the cave and the spirits are leaving him I, I think you really illustrated um the verses that we read today in mark 5 and um i love the tombs too and the way it's all just illustrated i know you put a lot of work into this um do you care to comment on everything about it and just show show everybody a tour of it and i'll I'll zoom in. We can even zoom in on the on the painting here and uh, let you take over. Um, yeah, I was just really thinking about um, this poor guy, you know, totally just, man, being all messed up and having having all these entities swarming on him and, and just uh, that amazing relief that must have happened afterwards when he was healed. Um, and yeah, I have on there, like, he's got his chain, like the chains and fetters and everything that's on him that who knows where he was like tied up and, and he broke out those, those same people that were like, no, uh, could you please leave? Actually, you know, they they might've been the ones like this guy's crazy and tried to like hold him down and restrain him and abandon him out here. Um, and then Jesus comes and has mercy on him and compassion and, and delivers this guy from, from this uh this oppression um so yeah just having those chains on there and um just trying to get a bit of a dramatic look and feel to it with um i don't know just some some entity looking things you know swarming around that are like just cleaving to him you know being and this guy being in torment 
Yeah, and just by looking at it and the illustration that you've done, you've done a marvelous job here. Thank you so much, Adam. And then um, first thing I'm thinking about, too, is the demons, the legion that was in the man, right? So if you mm-hmm. if you go back and look at what the Nephilim had, they have superhuman ability, superhuman strength. Mm-hmm. They could run and scale like a cheetah, and they could throw no telling. You know, let's just face it, a 15, 20-footer could pick up a boulder or a mm-hmm. piece of granite and sling it around like a Lego, right? So you could see that if there's a thousand, let's just say there's a thousand legion in this gentleman, they they have that ability to push that human flesh to its maximum. And that's why he's like completely in torment. Yeah. He's just, he, he just can't even handle it. He can't handle mm-hmm. it because there's so much insight and so much. I mean, could you imagine the knowledge, even though it was all wicked and demented, his mm-hmm. mind was overloaded with all kinds of nefarious things. And the sinister is no telling what memories and everything of these demons, right? The memories yeah. and everything latching into his brain. Uh, it was probably just so much torment that uh, whenever he seen Christ come, they, could you imagine the relief? Yeah. It, the relief that was given. Unbelievable. And, oh, um, that goes, goes for today. Like, that goes for today. Yeah. You know, yeah. go ahead. Adam. Seriously. I mean, like, um, and a lot of times, like, I mean, uh, just again, speaking of personal experience, I didn't know how, how lost I was, you know, until really being convicted and um, coming down and trying to, to seek forgiveness and mercy for, for disobeying God. Um, and then that, that relief, you know, that comes afterwards, uh, that the peace that only he can give as uh, I can't remember the scripture exactly, but, you know, when Jesus was saying, like, his peace is what he gives us, not as the world gives peace, but only the peace that he can give, that he He gave this man, you know, relief from all of this torment. And here we are, you know, over 2,000 years later, reading this account and getting edification from it and doing a little painting of it, too, <laughs> you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a wonderful painting. And... um I think that concludes our program tonight on Mark 5, but do you have any last words, Adam? It's always a blessing. I know we got a bunch of programs coming up in 2024. I know we might have a little lapse in the pro, you know, programs here soon, but we won't get into that. But we will be presenting some more in the near future. we got to get our schedules lined up and everything and whatnot. And uh, there's going to be a ble- – it's just a blessing of a year, I think. I'm feeling really uh, positive, even though the world is in chaos. <laughs> I still feel optimistic. I still feel optimistic, and I think that we're going to have just a, a blessed year regardless of the insanity. What do you think, Adam? What do you say, Adam? And how do you yeah. feel about this Draw and Live Waters episode 7 here? What do you think about it? How do you, Overall, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I think this is a, a cool one to do, a fun one. Um, hopefully people uh, enjoy it and uh, enjoy the painting and everything and um, just having a fun discussion about about scripture and trying to lift up and find new ways to, you know, enjoy God's word. <laughs> I kind of like what we're doing, right? Absolutely. But, um, Absolutely. And, um, yeah, so hopefully people enjoy it and all glory to God, um, for, uh, allowing us to come together and, and do this. Amen, brother Adam. Well, folks, with that being said, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. It helps with the algorithm here on the Visual Disturbance channel and also with FOJC Underground Church. Uh, sometimes the algorithms can be very uh, very uh, intuitive and very complex. So it helps us out if you share this out and hit the like button. And we would appreciate all the newcomers, new subscribers that come in. I hope everybody's blessed. I hope this is an edifying program for you all. That is it for this program. This was the We Are Legion Breaking Chains of Bondage Drawn Living Waters Episode 7. And me and Brother Adam, like always, are very blessed to do this. I would say high five, high five, and good night, everybody. But me and Adam haven't came up with a very interesting uh, <laughs> ending yet. We haven't we haven't got there to that point yet, like Brother David does. But if he can give us some um, wisdom in that, maybe we'll have us our own clever. Maybe we can have like drawing pens, Adam. Like drawing pens, you know, like hey. Get your drawing pen out and I don't know. But anyways, I can't come up with anything clever right now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But anyways, folks, have a blessed day, blessed evening, and uh, share this thing out. And we appreciate everything. Hit all the descriptions in the description box. Check out all the links and everything we're doing in social media and whatnot. 
uh, help, uh, help us build a community. We're uh, able to show, you know, as far as going to these different social media platforms, it helps with uh, showing off our projects and keeps everybody in tune on what we're up to. And um, it's just a blessing if y'all come over and join us on our social media platforms. And Brother Adam, thank you so much. You want to end us, you want to, you want to uh, conclude everything and uh, exit out here on, or do you want me to exit out? What do you think, Adam? Uh, uh, man, you're the pro. You're okay. the pro, man. All right, you, then. you know how to do it. <laughs> okay. Just thanks, everybody. Thank you, Adam. Well, folks, have a blessed night and visual disturbance host brian reese and then i'm just gonna say this brother adam's a host too he just doesn't know it yet but you all be blessed and uh thank you all for so much for attending with us today that concludes the program be blessed have a great evening